When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moons and stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, and the mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them little less than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under your feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Please join me in the prayer. Great and wonderful God, today we stand amazed at how you care for us. Though we are small, we hold a big place in your heart. You send your spirit to us as a comfort, a counselor,
holds us in your arms in our time of need. One who cares for us and lays the path before us. And walks along that path with us. As we, your people, gather here today, first of all, we celebrate you. We recognize in this moment these many hurts and in the many ways of this world that, Lord, you are greater than that. And so we turn our attention towards you. And as we are reminded of your love for us, we declare our love for you. And so in this moment, Lord, as we are here and asking for your special touch, and once again you renew in our hearts and minds your redeeming work, not only the way that you hold us up in your eyes, Lord, the strength that you offer each and every new day. As Lord, as we gather together, we come knowing we need you, that you are our only hope. And so as we're here today, Lord, we come and we pray for those, Lord, that are going through loss of loved ones. Pray for them and their families, that they would be surrounded by a loving relationships with each other, that, Lord, you would give peace to those hearts that are hurting that, Lord, in these days ahead, that you would surround them with just people that would be there to be your touch, to be your hands and your feet for them. As we're here today, Lord, we pray for those that are going through all sorts of life strife, whether it's just um, things that happen in life that just come our way in certain situations that we just happen to be in the middle of. But, Lord, we know our hearts hurts when things have happened. Or maybe, Lord, it's stuff that we ourselves are responsible for, whether it's sins that we commit, bad decisions that we make, or, Lord, our loved ones may be doing the same. So we pray, Lord, today for all those that are in need. We pray, Lord, for those that are needing a healing touch from you. May your Holy Spirit bring renewal in their bodies. We pray, Lord, for those that are serving in the military and also our first responders, that you keep them safe make them acts of peace around the world. May, Lord, for those that are maybe having family situations where there's strife or just people up in arms, may you remind us to love each other, to lay down hurts, and to offer forgiveness. For those, Lord, that are far from you, that are wondering the past of this world, maybe our loved ones that we know that are walking down past the Lord that lead to death, and you bring someone into their life, Lord, that would show them the way. And remind them to come back to you. Lord, we also pray for all of those that are here today that need your special touch. We pray for all of our prayer concerns that we lift up to you. <coughs> and our new ones that we lift up here today. May you bless each and every single one of them. And bless us as we, your people, strive to do our best to honor you, to give thanks to you, and to live the way that you taught us to. And so, Lord, with these, your prayers, our prayers, that is, that are brought to you, we continue to also pray that same prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
for all the blessings that you give us every single day. And the result of those blessings, we bring these gifts to you. Lord, we just ask that you guide us and, and how to use these gifts to further your kingdom here on earth. In your name we pray. Amen. Give up everything you own. Follow me. The rich young man couldn't do it. 
And we saw on that day, you know, part of this gospel message is this surrender to God's will. And it's not our, our way of doing it. It's not how we want it necessarily. But it's God's way. And it's always better for us in the end. We also looked at last, last week of the story itself. So if we're not supposed to truncate the story. What is the story we're supposed to tell? We looked at this meeting with Jesus and this man named Nicodemus where the famous gospel you know, story of uh, verse that is of John 3.16 comes out right? Where, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever so believeth him may not perish but have eternal life. What we often forget is that story and that verse is told by Jesus in the middle of talking with a man. And this man was Nicodemus who becomes a follower of Jesus Christ and we looked at that last week of that's the story of how Jesus is just like when Moses lifted up the snake, so Jesus was lifted up, and whoever turns to him is saved. And so we looked at that story, but that is the gospel message. And today, we're looking a little bit outside Jesus. So kind of the premise we've been looking at this whole entire sermon series is looking at how Jesus was with people and taking some of those learnings. And the truth is, this sermon series should go on for 40 years because really we have to go through every single moment where Jesus was with somebody to finish the sermon series, but unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, for you. We're not doing that. We're only reading today, so you can go hallelujah. But, uh, but nonetheless, whenever you're reading scripture, you know, stop and think about that. Not only what the scripture itself is teaching in that moment, but Jesus is always showing us how to be with people. And so you can always take that lesson. But uh, today we're going to be going outside, as you heard the, the scripture reading this morning. I wanted to take at least one story that was Jesus' disciples after Jesus left. Because there is an element of, when you're reading Jesus, he can do miracles, right? He walks on water, right? He heals the leper. He heals the blind person. He raises people from the dead. And, you know, in my general walking on this earth so far, not that God couldn't do it, but I've never had God say, okay, walk on water, right? And maybe you have. If you have, I'd like to hear your story. Come tell it to me sometime. Uh, but for the most part, right, like, some of what Jesus did, like, God does not empower us necessarily to be able to do. And so there is an element of when you're looking at Jesus, you know, you have to stop and say, all right, if God's Spirit allows me to do that, you know, it empowers me to do that, it's one thing. But if I think I can just do what Jesus did just on my own power, it ain't going to work, right? And so I wanted to share at least one story outside of Jesus himself, of his followers that was kind of right after he leaves the planet and, you know, it's ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit's come upon the disciples, and they've been empowered to go out and preach the good word. And what are their stories, right? And I chose this one specifically, just really because there's a bunch of stories you can look at, but I, I wanted to go to this one. Uh, and that's because it's one of these fun little cameos in the book of Acts. And what I mean by that, I mean, we call it the book of Acts, and it's, it's short for the Acts of the Apostles. But what's funny about that is, it really should be called the Acts of Peter and Paul with a couple of cameos of other disciples. <laughs> right? Pause it. Because really, if you ever read the book of Acts, the story is basically, it follows Peter, 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 and then somewhere through it, it stops following Peter, and it starts following Paul, and it's Paul, 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 to the end. And then you get to the end, and it doesn't quite have that, it has kind of like an abrupt ending, and you kind of get the feeling like Luke was going to try to write another book to finish this off, but never, either he never did, or never, uh, you know, got lost in time, or whatever. But nonetheless, this is one story of someone besides Peter, besides Paul, and besides Jesus following the Holy Spirit and reaching out to someone. Now, this story is it's kind of simple, right? Basically, you can imagine this. There's this Ethiopian place, right? You know, it's Ethiopia. Think like northern or the very southern part of uh, like the Egyptians. That's really kind of who these people were, right? this, this Ethiopian person that comes, this, this eunuch. And, uh, so you kind of think like the, the old historic powerhouse of Egyptian power. So not even like the pyramids that we know, but even before that, you go further up river, they're called the Northern Kingdom, which is kind of odd because it's actually south to go north in Africa at that place. But you go north, or south that is, to go up, up in the highlands, and that's the Northern Kingdom, if you will, or the, the higher kingdom. And when you get up that way, and you start getting into who these people were, well, they still existed all these years later. They were still a powerhouse, if you will. And um, this eunuch is basically someone who's acting on behalf of the queen. And uh, just kind of for fun, this is just a little bit fun tidbit out there. Uh, the word kandake, what it actually means is, is queen, but it's actually the mother of the king. And the reason why is because the king was thought to be too holy to deal with all like the, the you know, cares of this world. They were just supposed to be this religious god kind of person. And so the queen actually ran the whole entire state. 
So this, this eunuch is actually on behalf of the queen, if you will, the mother of the king, on behalf of doing all the affairs of the state and, and doing what he needs to do. So he's got a whole bunch on his plate. And yet, what does the scripture say that he was just doing? He's on the way back from Jerusalem from a time of worship. Now, if you stop and think about that, he's not Jewish, right? He's from a different people, a different nation, a different land. And yet, there's something about him that sees something in the God of Israel that says, you know what, I need to worship this God. Now, there's a couple ways that could be. In the old times, um, basically, if you were you know, in a land, it was thought that a, a God had power in that land. So, if you happen to be in Israel, it was not. It was pretty custom, for instance, if you were you know, from the Roman Empire or from somewhere else, to come in and say, oh, the God of Israel is the God of this area, so I need to worship this God right now, make this God happy so I don't get blasted on my journey home. Self-preservation, right? You worship the God just for your self-preservation kind of purposes. But then there were people that were called God-fearers. And who they were is they were not Israelites, they were not Jewish people, but yet they understood that God, this God, this monotheistic God, this all-powerful God, this, this God that has these moral codes that seem right, and these ways of living that seem right, and treating people differently than it seems like all the other gods wanted to, they wanted to know that God. And they were called God-fearers. They would come and they would worship and they'd do a lot of different things. Uh, but they were they were kind of outcasts, right? They couldn't actually go into the temple. They couldn't actually go do all the Israelite things of actually worship according to the Old Testament law of the Torah. So they kind of did it on the periphery as best they could. And then if you were really, you know, overachiever, you said, I want to give up my national identity. I don't care that I'm Egyptian, if you will. I don't care that I'm Ethiopian. I want to give up my identity. I want to become an Israelite. And then they were actually proselytized, and there was a way to actually become into the Jewish people if you were willing to give up all your identity and become a Jewish person. Not many people did that, though. And so this man right here, this eunuch, if you will, and, and I love that it never calls him his name, it just always says eunuch, just to remind you, and that becomes important here in a minute. But, uh, you know, he wants, Luke is trying to remind you, hey, this person's a eunuch. Hey, in case you forgot, the eunuch. Not his name, the eunuch. Just want you to remember that over and over and over. But what's important about that is this. Is an Old Testament law, even if this person wanted to become Jewish, he still wouldn't be allowed into the temple courts. Because part of being that Jewish idea of identity of the actual temple itself was God had told people, bring stuff without blemish. And so you couldn't bring a ram that had blemishes on it to offer as a sacrifice. You couldn't do this, this, and this. And even you couldn't be a priest, or you couldn't really enter into the things that most people could if you had some type of blemish about you. Being a eunuch counted as a blemish. And so this man who wants to worship God is held at a distance. Right? This man who has all the cares of the kingdom of his world, it's not his God in his land, he's from Ethiopia, but he wants to worship this God. And so he goes and he's wealthy enough to own a chariot, he's riding the chariot back from his time of worship, and he probably did it as best he could, which pretty much was... He probably walked up to the money changers and said, hey, God, I need a random sacrifice for me. And they went and did it, and he just kind of stood outside and said, okay, good enough, right? He came off. He probably did not get much of a worship experience, honestly, when he came up. And so he's on this chariot ride home. Again, he's, wants to, he want, he's seen something in this God, and he wants to follow and honor this God. And yet he's held at arm's length. And I love this story because Philip, this is one of the only stories we get of Philip, uh, the, after, you know, the hanging out with Jesus time. And one of the few stories we get of any of the apostles, again, besides Peter and Paul going out and doing different things. And the Spirit calls Philip. says, hey, go find this guy. Now, if he knew the guy was in a chariot, he'd probably say, oh, God, he's in a chariot. <laughs> right? So you can imagine a chariot, you know, bumping along, doing its thing, and then Philip, like, chasing him down, right there. Right? And what's the guy doing? He's reading from the book of Isaiah, and specifically the part about the suffering servant part of Isaiah. And Philip, of course, you know, finds him that they have this discussion. And I, I don't know how that actually happened, because the scripture it, it, it doesn't quite give us some of these details. But in my head, there's this, there's this part of this scene where the guy, the, the eunuch, is literally in the chariot, chariot away. And Philip is literally running beside him and, like, explaining the gospel, you know, like, with things to him until he finally understands, like, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. Hey, jump in my chariot. And then you imagine, like, the chariot ride, like, top-down, convertible style, like, wind in the air, you know, and around until, you know, it's like the perfect, like, Jesus moment chariot moment. And yet, 
But it's amazing to think that this person that was outside of Israel, God said, hey, Philip, I'm nudging you. Go find this person. And the spirit empowered them to go. And the spirit empowered them to have the right words. And the spirit empowered a, a water, a body of water to come across that this eunuch who had been kept outside of the Israelites' worship and follow Jesus Christ. We catch that. Like, we, we just kind of hit you over the head when he keeps saying eunuch over and over again. He wants you to kind of make that connection. And so the eunuch is baptized. What happens then, right? It's kind of one of these fun little stories where he, yeah, I imagine Phyllis so literally bringing him out of the water because I imagine it was a full baptism kind of deal. And literally, poof, like, it just says the Spirit took him away. It took him to anywhere but Jerusalem, right? It doesn't go back to Israel. The Spirit magically picks him up and drops him off at a place, as it's in the Old Testament, called Ashdod. It was one of the Philistine cities. It's not the Israelites, but to the lands, if you will. There's somewhere else besides the Israelites. Hey, the Spirit Philip, is bringing you to people outside your group, to people searching for Jesus, outside your comfort zone, outside the people you would think, the rich, the powerful, even them, yes, go. And then the story ends there, but then it picks up with Paul, who's just received his sight. We've already had the conversion for it. He's now received his sight again, and he's now actually taking up the mantle. God's putting the mantle on to go out to all the nations and to bring the good news to them. So that's where the story kind of lies. And as we just kind of finish up the sermon series, it's a real, real simple idea at the end of this. So we've talked about many different things of how to reach people and to be a fisherman, you know, to actually catch people alive, so to speak. But the biggest idea I want to leave you with is this. It's so simple, it's easy to overlook. And it's so simple, we get it wrong. And we make strategies and things out of it that we don't need to do sometimes. And it's simply this. The Spirit leads us. And what I mean by that is the Holy Spirit was given to each believer. You see it come down at Pentecost in the in the book of Acts at the beginning where the disciples are sitting around and they're, they're lost, they're like sheep, just lost, wandering around kind of thing, don't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit comes and pound them and all of a sudden they've got power. And all of a sudden they go out and they start preaching and they're able to overcome the ways of the world and endure all sorts of hardships and do all the things that God has called them to do to reach people. But the whole entire time it's never them. It's always them following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so as we're here today, I think the, the appropriate message is so simple. It's go where the Spirit leads you. And if you've been a follower of Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit inside you, and you, 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 you've felt this before, right? A lot of people call it conscience, and there's a conscience kind of thing too, but this is even beyond that. This is that idea of like there's a tugging at your mind, at your heart, your soul, sometimes to be led, to do something. I am, uh, I'm going to use... My friend Kathy Kupski is one of my friends uh, from before. And Kathy, if you ever get to watch this, I owe you two bucks for because I didn't give you the rights to tell your story. So, <laughs> so we're going to I'll pay you two bucks for this story. But uh, my friend Kathy was a follower of Christ, and she does stuff all around the world. She uh, loves to just go and do mission work and things like that. Young woman, uh, awesome person. And she was telling us a story we had in Sunday school, and we were sharing different stories. She was telling us a story once of, you know, the Holy Spirit is guiding you sometimes. Kind of, and just kind of doing things, you're just like, why, Holy Spirit? Are you telling me to do this? And you think, this is crazy, And then, but there's some part of you that finally is obedient, and then all of a sudden it becomes revealed why. And she had one of these moments. She said she was traveling around, she was at the airport, and she's looking over, and there's this lady that has just hair, crazy. I mean, just looks nasty, looks like kind of going everywhere, just, just crazy. And, you know, everybody's kind of giving her that look like, What's wrong with that lady? You like, over here? And so she's praying about it, whatever, and she just feels like, well, it's here. I'm not you. don't talk about it. Go ask this lady if you, if you can come over here. She's like, God, I'm not going across the street for the airport. And ask you her, her if I can come over here. And so she fights it and fights it and fights it. Finally, she's like, all right, I, I, the Spirit's leading me, and I'm just, I'm going to make a fool of myself and maybe get arrested. I'm going to go do it. Right? And so she goes over and she asks the lady, she's like, hey, uh, I know this sounds really awkward, but can I go over here? Like, would it be okay if I brush your hair? And then the lady shared with her, and I can't remember exactly the details as far as what the, the, the condition was, but she had some condition where she couldn't lift her hands top. And she was actually on her way to go see her daughter, and she was totally embarrassed about her hair. 
she couldn't do anything about it without asking for help. And she didn't have anybody to help. And so she had been praying for some kind person to come up and to ask for a brush if she could have her hair brushed. It's pretty amazing how the spirit leads her like that, right? I had a, a seminary professor named Dr. Wong, who's passed away now. Awesome guy, I love him. If you're ever interested in the book of Revelation, he's got one of the best uh, commentaries in the book of Revelation out there. It's just awesome. But he, uh, he, he was telling a story one time about uh, he was asked to go to different conferences and give speeches, you know, talk about the Bible and different things. And he was doing this, of course, doing his normal thing, and um, he was at this place, and he went on a walk after kind of like one of the sessions. He had done his first day, completed it. Second day was coming up. So at nighttime, after dinner, taking the walk, and he's walking around, just around the neighborhood, and uh, Spirit nudging again, a piece of trash on the ground. Spirit says, pick it up. He says, but I'm always like, that's stupid. I'm just making this up in my head. Like, this is not true. Like, I'm just, I'm just, so he tries to walk past it, right? And he has to stop, because the nudging, right? He's like, this is, why? <laughs> you know, like, this is just a piece of trash on the ground. What's the big deal? So finally he's obedient, picks it up. You know, I don't remember if he carried it with him or the trash can or whatever. He gets disposed of it appropriately, of course, but he picks it up and takes it. Next day, after the session, one of the ladies in the session comes up and says, Hey, just so you know, I gotta tell you something. As I came to this and I was super skeptical, I have been hurt and abused my whole entire life. And just there's certain people that like I just take it past. And I know you're probably a good person, but I couldn't hear a word you said because I just can't believe that you're a good person. <laughs> I do. And she said, but I saw you last night. I saw you do what, right? You know where this is going. I saw you pick up a piece of trash and throw it away. And I thought that person's different than all the people that hurt me. And I was able to receive your words today. And it's changing my life. And I wanted you to know that. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't always make sense, right? The Holy Spirit in our life doesn't always, when you plan it out, you strategize, you say, this is not the way to do this, right? <laughs> like, I should not be going up to random people in the, in the lobby of the airport and asking if I can brush their hair, right? And I should not be picking up, you know, I have to feel like I have to pick this piece of trash up, otherwise the world comes to an end if I don't. But yet, the Holy Spirit will lead us. And so the question really today is not just to realize that, but to listen to the Holy Spirit clear our lives in such a way that we can hear the Holy Spirit. And the second part is this, is to be obedient when you feel that tongue. Because it's totally possible to hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to speak that word into our life, for us to hear it loud and clear, and to say, and next time. And then next time becomes next time. Next time. And then you create a culture and a habit of never ever following the Holy Spirit. So the second thing is when you feel that tug, is to be obedient. I know if you're a follower of Christ, you probably have those moments. And I hope, uh, you know, if you just have a, a chance today, I know we're going to be sharing uh, time together for those that want to come down. We're going to be doing the assembly school supplies. That's what I encourage you as we're talking and having fun. If you have a story like that, share it with people around you. The Holy Spirit's been alive and been working in your life. And I think it's one of those amazing things when you hear from other people, you go, yeah, I've had experience like that too. We don't tell those stories enough. We don't empower ourselves enough to be led. We do amazing things. It seems absurd that God uses for great and mighty works. Let us pray. Lord, as we're here today, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for the story of Philip, Lord, how your Holy Spirit guided him. And he was obedient and he went. And uh, you know what, Lord, again, we don't know if this is exactly how it looked, but if he's running along with that chariot, Sprinting as fast as he can just to preach the good news. Help us, Lord, to have that same commitment. And if you tell us to go, to do whatever it is, whether it's embarrassing or whether it's just hard work, or whether it you know, makes us look like idiots to this world, whatever it is, Lord, you call us to do, we trust that you're going to do a good work for you. And so as we're here today, Lord, and we finish this series, you know, there's many more things, Lord, that the scripture we can learn. But as we're here today, help us, first of all, to be catchers of people, to see ourselves as part of your work and redemption in this world. Help us, Lord, to sit with people like you did at the table, to become part of their lives and to love them. Not just preach at them, but become truly their friends. That they can see the good work in us and know us day by day. 
It would help us also to never take the gospel message to cut it short and make it more palatable, or Lord, to make it more just convenient for somebody. And help us, Lord, to always preach this message of you coming to this world, of loving us, of being our only hope, of dying on the cross, rising again, and Lord, also empowering us with the Holy Spirit. We will be led and be able to listen to your urgings. We pray all this in your holy son's name. Amen. As we prepare to worship today in the Holy Communion, when I encourage you to gather your hymnals, we're going to be doing the uh, Holy Communion Covenant, that is, on page 12. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all the loved ones who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved thee in the whole world. We have failed to be in the church. We have not had any good. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of thee. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving found on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and right and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, Christ took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. But when the supper was over, Christ took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is the blood of my covenant poured out for you and for many to the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offered for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has won our name. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and all these gifts of bread and wine. May it be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and be feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, the honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We ask the community stewards to come and prepare to help with the community. As they come, we want to let you know uh, if you're visiting with us today, uh, this community table is open to everyone. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of the denomination. If you want to just experience Jesus Christ, this cup and uh, bread is for you to your today. Just a minute, um, we'll be passing the trays around. 
what will happen is you'll take a piece of the bread as it's passed to you. You're going to hold on to that bread. And at the very end, once everybody has been served, we'll take that together. And then right after that, we'll then pass the cups around. Again, hold on to your cup until everybody's been served, and we'll partake together. Uh, do you know also that if you happen to have a gluten-free element, or you need a gluten-free uh, element here today, I do have a couple of those up here. Uh, so if you need that, just kind of raise your hand uh, once we start serving, and we'll be sure to give those to you uh, so that you have that here today. And more ushers are used to it.
blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, we are so very thankful for this moment to be with you, to commune with each other, and to once again be reminded of your sacrifice and your love for us. And once again, to celebrate the new life that you have given us. Lord, as we leave here today, we rejoice in you. We go out gladly, having known you that we have met with you, and having known of your love, and your mercy, and your grace, and your precious day. We all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
and it's a good way to show a lot of this disease. So as we go, let's hear this benediction. May the Lord who empowers us, the Lord who brings the Holy Spirit to guide us, brings us to people we never thought, and asks us to do things that we never thought we'd do, but gives us power to run with chariots. May that Holy Spirit guard you and keep you this week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.